Now then, 11 months ago, we'd never even heard of COVID-19. But earlier this week, the news broke that we've got a vaccine that so far, at least, is promising to be more effective than anyone could have dreamed. The wonder of science. It was created by the husband and wife team, Or, or Shaheen and Oshleen Terjeje, who run BioNTech. I spoke to Mr. Shaheen yesterday and I began by asking him when we will know that the vaccine is safe to use. What we have seen so far indicates that the vaccine has a typical typical vaccine associated side effect profile. That means that means uh, the people who receive the vaccine have pain in the injection site for for a few days, uh, which is mild to moderate. And uh, and a proportion of the of the participants who receive the vaccine has fe- has fever. Uh, also for one uh, to two days, and the fever is also mild to moderate. These are the key side effect, effects that we have seen, and uh, and uh, and we did not see any other uh, serious side effects which would which would uh, um, result in pausing or or halting of the study. We are we have now safety data for a proportion of the subjects for more than two, two months, and we are continuing to collect this data for more than two years uh, to really not only to see the short and midterm side effect profile, but also the long term uh, side effect profile. But so far, the safety profile uh, appears to be absolutely benign. Will your vaccine be able to be used in combination with, for instance, the AstraZeneca vaccine and others? So at the, at the beginning, it does not make uh, sense to combine vaccines. And so every vaccine has been clinically evaluated uh, as, a, as a prime boost. So that means most vaccines are based on, on a, a first injection and after three weeks or after four, four weeks, a second injection. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't mix that because this has not been evaluated for safety. But if the if after one year, for example, if someone who has received an AstraZeneca vaccine, yeah, and who does not uh, anymore have an immune response, then it could be combined with a BioNTech Pfizer vaccine, or vice versa. Do we know how long the immunity lasts after the second dose? We don't know, so we need to collect this data. Uh, we can at the moment uh, only only extrapolate some of the existing existing data with this extrapolation one can expect that that the antibody response and the t-cell response uh, so it is well known that t-cell responses are very long-lived uh, so after after uh, people who for example had SARS infection more than 18 years ago uh, have been have been have been identified having still T cell responses so the antibody response might decline over time and we expect it will decline over time but what is not known how fast it will decline and whether after one year for example sufficient antibody titers are still still there we are collecting this information and we will see it and if the antibody response for example after one year appeared to be to be too low, uh, we can we can do a booster immunization, which should not be too complicated. So we're all accustomed to getting annual flu jabs. Is it going to be more or less the same kind of thing, annual COVID-19 jabs in the years ahead? Uh, yes, yeah, so the, the flu is a little bit different because uh, with flu, we are really dealing every year with a different strain or different strains. Yeah. Uh, so with, with the COVID-19, the COVID-19, of course, has has um, some some mutations, but so far the mutations are very distinct, and I don't expect that the that, that the virus will have a dramatic shift, uh, which is observed, for example, for for influenza. So the only reason for booster immunizations will be if we realize that there is no protection after one year, and we have to see that it could be that it's immunization each year every second year or even every five years. So we really need to generate data to answer this question. We did not yet investigate the mutations which came from the minks. That will happen in the next two weeks. And I'm also confident that these mutations, because they are, even though there are several mutations, uh, they are relatively small mutations, and we are confident that the broad immune response that we are generating by our immunogen uh, uh, would be able to, to inactivate even these variants because 99% of the, of the virus spike proteins remains still stable. 
Now, clearly, you understand this vaccine better than anybody else. Is it as effective in older people as it is in younger people? We have reported uh, efficacy over 90 percent. So that means that means they and we had in our clinical trial also uh, elderly people uh, with in the range of 35 to 40 percent. So I expect that it is also also effective in elderly people, but I can't say at the moment how effective it is. We are now waiting for for the final analysis, efficacy analysis of this of this trial, which will happen in the next ten to um, ten, ten days to three weeks. And and with this, we will have the full data set in 164 uh, uh, infected uh, uh, subjects, and then we can say how many of them were in, in elderly people in the control group, how many are in the vaccine group. And we can provide this information. It will just take, take uh, another few weeks. So here's the really big question that I don't understand at all. Does the vaccine simply stop symptoms in people with COVID-19 or does it stop the virus being spread? I expect so. We, we did not formally answer these questions. We can indirectly answer this question, question in a few months uh, by also evaluating, for example, uh, antibodies in, in subjects in both groups, uh, which are not directed against the immunogen, but against other, other proteins of the virus. That could give us an idea. Yeah, but as a as a scientist and from from extrapolation, what we have seen so far so far for other other viruses, uh, I, I would expect it uh, that a high efficacy in preventing disease, yeah, uh, translates into at least some efficacy in uh, preventing infection. So I'm very confident, and that transmission between between people will be reduced by such a highly effective vaccine. Yeah. Not Maybe not 90%, but maybe 50%. But we should not forget that even that could uh, result in a dramatic reduction of the pandemic spread. Now, a week ago today, you were sitting there waiting for the phone call to tell you whether this vaccine worked, and if so, how effectively. Just tell us a little bit about the moment when the phone rang. I knew that we will get an, a call at 8 yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, providing us this answer, and um, and uh, and I got the call from from Albert Bola, who is the CEO of Pfizer. In the mean, meanwhile, was a good friend, and he called me and asked me if I would like to know uh, if the if the trial is positive. And I said no, <laughs> but then I, I said of course, and he, he said sit down, yeah, and uh, and provided me the information that that the trial is positive and which was extremely relieving. As a scientist, you, of course, expect a certain likelihood that the trial could be positive based on the data we had uh, so far, but there is always unknown factors, and it could be that there is a scientific, biological, or medical reason why the vaccine does not work. We now know that our vaccine works, and most likely other vaccines will, will, will also work. So this is really uh, 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 a message which not only changes the fate how we develop vaccines, but also, also increases the likelihood that we will be able to get this pan pandemic under control. And how did you celebrate? Uh, <laughs> we did not ha have a lot of opportunity to celebrate. We just we just uh, uh, discussed the the, the 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 road. So I I, I discussed that with with uh, my, my wife as in theology, uh, uh How fantastic this result is! It is an extraordinary result. We sit together uh, and and had a tea together and just uh, recapitulated the last months until we got this data and it is relieving and of course it, it, it provides joy. Well of course everyone in Britain will be delighted that you had a cup of tea to celebrate. <laughs> this, is, this is not only British, this is also Turkish. <laughs> Very good. Well can this vaccine be adapted for other diseases, for instance cancer? Our main application for messenger RNA vaccines so far were in the cancer field and are, is still in the cancer field. We are using messenger RNA vaccine to induce immune responses against tumor cells by identifying mutations and by identifying tumor antigens which are expressed in different tumors. These are clinical trials which are ongoing and we will we are expecting uh, clinical results, efficacy results in, in two years from now. And this could be, of course, also an exciting development.
That does sound very exciting. Meanwhile, President Trump has said that without his Operation Warp Speed, neither you nor Pfizer could have achieved that. Is that true? We had decided from the very beginning to, to stay independent and, uh, and to ensure that regardless what happens, that we, um, that we are able to de deliver the vaccine to any place, uh, any place on the planet where it is needed. And, and therefore, we didn't uh, uh, get, get direct, direct um, support from the Operation Warp Speed. But uh, it was good to see how this was organized. Uh, and, 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 and we, of course, ensured that there is a harmonization and compatibility of the clinical trial protocols that are used in the Operation Warp Speed and our operation, which is called Light Speed. Now, in this country, we had a yes, yes, yes moment when a leading academic said he thought we would be back to normal by the spring because of the vaccine. So what is your assessment? Will we be back to normal? And if so, when? This winter will be hard. Yeah, so, so we will not have a big impact on the, on the infection numbers with our vaccine in this winter. If everything uh, continues to go well, we will start to deliver the vaccine end of this year, beginning next year, our goal is to deliver more than 300 millions, millions uh, of vaccine doses uh, uh, until, until yeah, April, April, April next year, which could allow us uh, to already start to make an impact. Uh, the bigger impact will happen until summer. Yeah, the summer will help us help us anyway because the infection rate will go down in in summer. And what is absolutely essential is that we get a high high vaccination rate uh, until uh, or before autumn winter next year. So that means all the all the the, the immunization vaccination approaches must be accomplished before before next autumn. Yeah, and if and I'm confident that, that this will happen because there are a number of vaccine companies helping us to, to, to increase the supply and, and so that we could have a normal winter next year. So that sounds like a lot of work ahead. So for you, I suppose, back to the laboratory, not to the beach or the yacht. Yes, yes. A little bit beach is also fine. Mr. Shahin, thanks very much indeed for joining us and congratulations from all of us. Yeah, thank you so much. It was a pleasure. You might almost say the man who saved the world.